Ladies and gentlemen, get your shakers ready. It's martini time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Magic Martini Monday. My name is Daniel. And I'm Belladonna. And we are the, the Shields. Shields. <laughs> Today we are reviewing the latest Penguin Lecture, which is Derek Ostavani. I think that's how it's pronounced. Yep. He is a San Diego magician from the USA. A, he's an award-winning magician. And he's also been um, bestowed Best Hair in Magic three years in running. And if you see this lecture or you know Derek, you will understand why. What's wrong with my hair? <laughs> he is an Adonis of magic. Oh, yeah. I, this dude came on camera and he's... Six foot something, built like a linebacker, and I was just went, God damn it. You, you, you look like that and you do magic. Magic's supposed to be for nerds. <laughs> Leave it for the nerds. So this week we're going to, in honour of Derek, um, create a beard teeny. A beard teeny, because he's got a big beard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, get your shakers ready. It's martini time. Martini time. Beatini. The Beatini. The chocolate's supposed to be his hair on the top. <laughs> so, effects. Yes, it does. <laughs> um, so he opens up with a little bit of theory and discussion on openers, funnily enough. And it's one of my favorite topics to discuss and to hear people discuss is how to start your set, particularly in strolling, walk around magic, that sort of thing. He's got one point of view. Other people have other point of views. I always like hearing all point of views. So this was a good way to start the lecture. Yeah. And one of his um, beginning effects um, is a, a little flash production um, with a coin. And that was one of my favorite little pieces. It was something that um, I do a little flash production myself. Um, I can really see this being an effective eye opener, like a catch, catch people's attention. Yep. Um, Get them which is really important, especially if you're working in bar or restaurant magic. You want to grab your audience's attention immediately so that you can get in there. Absolutely. And from there, he does go into a fancy Four Aces production. And this ties into uh, flashy openers to get people's attention to let them know something cool is going to happen. So he goes from there into a... Four Aces wild card slash transposition effect. And this is one of my favorite things in Magic as well, is a uh, transposition effect to start with, but a multiple card transposition where four cards switch places with a single card. I really enjoy that. Yeah. Hmm. He has some very nice subtleties that he's added to his routines, um, which I think people need to really focus their attention on a little bit more because those subtleties can make a trick way more rem memorable yep. um, to the spectator and make it more powerful um, when you do do the final reveal. So yep. I really enjoyed that. And using the card box as a prop that you can use. It's something card magicians always have there, but not many people use it. There's a lot of work out there I know specifically on this, but I don't see a lot of people using the box as a prop. So yep. that was nice to see as well. So he has a um, rubber band routine. Mm. Uh, it's an amazing routine. Um, he has a kicker at the end, which was really unexpected and really did make the trick. Um, Eric actually added suggestions on handling afterwards, which Derek took on board. And I think that, like for me personally, when magicians are in an interview and they go off script and you watch them um, bounce off each other, on, in a creative level, it's so um, thought-provoking and exciting, mm. and 
inspirational. So I really did enjoy that segment of the lecture. Yeah, you get to see the magic happen. Yeah, <laughs> it's Mind really the good. Pun. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like a live magic jam almost. Yeah, it was. So, which is something you don't always see. It's good to see. Yeah, it's wonderful. So, as well as the four cards to one card transposition, he does a couple of other transposition effects. They're all unique in their own way, which is good. So, if you were to perform these one after the other, the audience wouldn't realize that they are all essentially the same thing. The other one is four of a kind changing to another four of a kind. And. He does it very well. Again, any transposition I really enjoy, but this one was particularly good. There's some great handling tips on this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, impromptu sobriety test. Yes. This was actually your favorite. This was my favorite. Yeah. Uh, this is, at the root of it, it's a chop cup routine, but it doesn't use a chop cup. It Which uses... is funny because we don't use chop cups either. We use martini glasses. Yes. <laughs> but he uses one of these and it's his take on a effect that has previously been released he did receive permission to lecture mm -hmm. his version of this uh, so if you've seen Jiggernaut in the past because this is called a Jigger it's a funny name I know but uh, yeah he uses one of these it's not gimmicked mm -hmm. does a chop cup routine the final loads are fantastic uh, and the kicker ending is a liquid load so after handling this Try again. disappears so after handling that he uh, pours a liquid shot out of it in front of people and that's always one of my favorites yep i'm um, just going quickly back to the rubber band selection routine um i believe that derek did mention that it was a doug con routine yes yeah and um we just thought we'd quickly mention too that doug con recently had to relocate due to cyclone ida hmm. so anybody who wants to reach out to him feel free to do so i'm sure he'd appreciate that too absolutely so on that note we will now go to derek who is going to tell us who his favorite lecturer is and how it impacted him as a magician to derek to derek hello Magic Martini Mondays. Welcome. Uh, my name is Derek Ostavani. I am in San Diego, California in America. And uh, you all are in uh, Australia, but really it's YouTube, so you're all around the world. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm honored and flattered to be uh, asked to be here um, for uh, Martini Mondays. I'm actually jealous I'm not there because I do love martinis. Uh, so it's a pleasure just watch them being made. And, uh, you know, definitely join in with the martinis that they make and uh, join along because I know I do. Anyways, again, my name is Derek Ostavani. I'm a professional magician, full time. And I've been doing magic for uh, going on 17 years now. And unlike most people that, you know, got their start when they were a little kid, I started at uh, the age of 21. I loved it as a little kid but didn't quite know, you know, where to go. But 21, you know, I think I was an adult and uh, figured it out on my own. Didn't have to ask uh, my mom and dad to buy me anything. So, uh, anyways, uh, I recently just did my Penguin Live lecture. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. I'm 100% a worker. Everything I did there is working material. It is practical and it's stuff that has worked for me. I would definitely not uh, put anything out that I just thought was not, you know, solid material. So, you know, everyone's got a different persona, personality, style, but this is mine. And uh, I hope you guys do enjoy it. I've uh, been invited to 4F, which was quite intimidating. You know, being in front of 250 of the most uh, best close-up magicians in the world and having to perform. Uh, well, the first trick I performed there was my Juggernaut routine, which you will see at the end of my lecture. Um, Obi O'Brien actually caught me doing it from behind my shoulder. I didn't know he was there. He was fooled. He actually said, he put his hand on my shoulder and he was like, I turned back and he was like, you just fooled the shit out of me. So I've been to 4 a couple times and that was uh, flattering as well. And... Uh, yeah, you got to perform for everybody. It's, it's a weird room. But anyways, it was a great experience in my life. Um, 
thoroughly enjoyed it. Looking forward to going back. But you know, uh, when I got started, uh, pretty early on I saw a lecturer, and uh, that was Gregory Wilson. You know, I, I always find that as a magician, you were so influenced by your your very first lecturer, right? Because you don't really know a whole lot, or you see things in books or on camera, on you know, in videos. But seeing it live, man, it was it was great, and uh, I loved his style. I loved his persona. Uh, he was funny. He was uh, was is very talented, technically wise, and so forth and so on. And at the time, he was like. He was heavy in sleight of hand and, uh, um, you know, card work and a lot of like, I don't want to say flourishes, but he, what he is, was flashy. I think he's kind of veered away from that. Maybe he's felt like he's, he's done that part, that part of his life is done. So anyways, that was my very first lecture. So it meant a lot to me, it meant a big influence on me, big impact. Well, I mean, that's definitely how he impacted me, you know, uh, being my first lecturer and being kind of the, the cool guy that I, I, uh, I think I have a similar type of style and just think it's who, who I am. But I have a couple of other great, you know, lecturers. I love um, uh, Paul Gertner and uh, Chad Long, Guy Hollingworth, you know, as I mentioned, Greg Wilson. Uh, Bill Malone was a big influence on me. So anyways, um, you know, I continue to always be a student and I think that's important. Um, you should always do that, you know, uh, and, you know, as a full-time performer, sometimes you get bogged down with like marketing and the actual performer, performance and everything, but uh, always be a student, always learn, always work on things, always try and better yourself. Because what do they say, you know, the second you stop, somebody else is going to, you know, surpass you. Well, I guess that's about it for me, folks. Uh, my name is Derek Ostavani. If there's uh, anything else you'd like to uh, know about me, learn about me, you, you want to be friends with me, I'm very friendly, chat with me, you want beard tips. I mean, come on. I mean, they made a beard teeny after me. I mean, <laughs> how flattering is that? You gotta love it. Uh, I can't wait to try the beard teeny myself. So hopefully you do as well. Follow me, Instagram, Facebook. YouTube, uh, you know, even if you have binoculars and you want to look at me through my window, you know, I have three cats, so you'll see me playing with them. Uh, but Derek Ostavani, check out the lecture. I also have a couple of other uh, effects out, uh, random odds and treasury, both ugh, great material. I swear to God, not being biased. Fun fact, random odds was supposed to be called borrowed odds. Things got uh, mixed up in the uh, ad copy. But check them out. Check out my lecture. And I'd love to hear what you think about it. Thank you very much. See you next time, Australia. So, in this lecture, there is a very interesting topic that has been brought up. Um, and I thought that I would do a little bit of research in regards to it. Yeah. So, I just thought I'd let Derek know, yeah. and anybody else out there who's curious. It did take up a solid five minutes of the lecture. It's a very important point. So, we thought we should bring up this important yeah. point. So, the, the 1891 patent for toilet paper rolls literally states that the end of the roll should be hanging off the exterior. In other words, it should be placed in the over position. Yeah. So, hopefully that clears things up for people. Um, there, there was a lot of toilet paper discussion. In, in this lecture, and I guess we didn't mention that as an effect. You know, it did take up some time. Uh, so now, for me personally, I've always hung mine underneath, unless I want to be a bit fancy and fold the top over the top. However, if like us you have cats, you will also know that hanging the roll over the top entices the cats. If you've got the window open and the flap blows in the wind, the cats think it's a toy mm. and you will wake up in the morning with toilet paper everywhere throughout your house. So I frequently so, have to turn the toilet roll the other way around <laughs> because it's always on the wrong way in this house. It drives me mental. So in closing, if you have cats, hang it underneath. If you have not got cats, hang it the correct way over the top, just like the patent suggested in the beginning. No. The original is not always the best, I can tell you that. <laughs> And if anyone from Penguin is watching, there were two things they did really good this time around. They put some subtitles in 
for when they couldn't remember the references. They actually went out of their way to write in who came up with the original. This was really good because that person does deserve the credit for coming up with that particular technique. The other thing they did really good in this one, which I haven't really seen much of before, when explaining a particular slide, they went into a split screen sort of view. So there was the front on view and the overhead camera. So you could see both angles at the same time. A lot of the time they go one and then the other and then switch backwards and forwards. But having that split screen was awesome. So Penguin, if you're watching, keep up the good work. I really like that. Our Tate's take this week. We're going to leave that for a week because we noticed something fairly peculiar this week and only hardcore Penguin lecturer fans like us would probably pick up on this. So we're going to give it one more week and then we're going to enlighten everybody. So if any of you out there have noticed a, a particular oh, yeah, curiosity, a particular trait, um, <laughs> throw it in the comments and let us know that you've picked up on it. And if you haven't, next week we will, we will reveal. We will be talking about it because it's quite peculiar. <laughs> all right. So one final note. I think we we should um, all pay our respects to Ace McDermott, who unfortunately lost his life to COVID this week. Um, our love to his family and friends. They do have a fund a GoFundMe page. So if you do have the means to contribute to Ace McDermott's family and want to help them out. Feel free to look that up you can also find it on our facebook pages because we have shared that link as well yep and now we go to our newest segment questions from our fans which requires a psychic <laughs> as a psychic i shall divine the answer to the question that our viewer has written in today before i've even read it and today's question the answer is my disappearing act. And the question that our viewer has sent in, what is my parents' favorite magic trick? <laughs> On that note, we'll see you all next week. Look at that. I can't believe. Why didn't you just refilm that bit? Yeah. Because that would be funny, me dropping it. It's martini time.